Okay, so using fq equals kqq over r squared is really pretty easy. Where it begins to get a little more complicated is when we realize, sorry, just need to make it a little bigger for you, when we realize that this is just a force. And so as a force, it can be added to other forces. So now you need to go to page 640, and this is when they really get fun. Because on page 640, it's very white, um, you're going to have to do some of the forces. So in the first one, there's a proton that's floating above one that's, so there's one that's anchored like on a table, and then there's one that's floating some distance above it. Well, obviously, if they're both positive charges, um, then they're going to be repelling. So this guy up here that's floating is going to be experiencing a force FQ away from the other one. And then obviously there's going to be a force of gravity acting down. And so if you set KQQ over R squared equal to FG, you should be able to solve number six. Number seven and number eight are going to get a little more tricky. And if you look at the back of the sheet that uh, of notes that you have, I put three examples on there. And the third example shows gives you an idea, uh, maybe the second and third, just look at the back of the sheet, gives you an idea of how, yeah, second and third, give you an idea of how to add forces together when they're electrostatic. So if you have a positive charge here, a negative charge here, and maybe a negative one here, and we'll call this one um, force one, or charge one, this one number two, and this one number three, then the question might say, find the net force on number three, or on number two from one and three. So first you would find the force on number two from number one by doing FQ one two is equal to KQ1Q2 over R squared. Then you would find the force of on number two from number three, and it would be FQ equals KQ2Q3 over R squared. And so you would find the value for both of these. The first one is going to end up being a negative force, because one's positive and one's negative, so it's going to be attractive. So number one is going to put a force on two this way. So FQ12 will go that way. And then number three on number two, it's going to be positive. And positive is repelling. So it will also be putting a force on number two going to the left. This will be Q23. So even though this first force that you'll find will be a negative value, and this force will be a positive value, in the end, you'll end up adding them together. Here the negative is telling us attracting going to the left. Here the positive is telling us repelling, so therefore also going to the left. So once you draw your forces in on the charge that you're trying to find the total for, drop the positive and negative, and then just do either add them if they're going the same way or subtract them if they're going opposite ways. Okay, so once you have the positive negatives, on the forces that you're calculating, use that to draw the arrows on your diagram and then the arrows will tell you do you add or subtract them. If they're in a straight line, they're much easier than if they're not in a straight line, like example three and like questions seven and eight on in the textbook. In seven and eight, they're on corners of a triangle. Okay, and so uh, for seven, charge A is at po um, zero and four. So this is charge A up here, and it says that the are in meters. So this is four meters because Cartesian coordinates are zero and four meters. And then charge B is at the origin. So it's here at the origin. So this means it's C and C is 5, coordinates 5 and 0. 
Okay? And so that means that this is 5 meters. And if this is 4 and this is 5, then I can find the hypotenuse. And so the question wants you to find the net force on each charge. So you're going to need to do KFQ AB and find KQA QB over R squared. And then you're going to need to do FQ AC and do KQA QC over R squared. And then once you have those two forces, that's the force that B is putting on A and the force that C is putting on A. So once you have both of those, then draw in on A what they're doing. So if I do it down here, if this is A, then B wa um, A was, charge A is positive 5 microcoulombs. B was negative 5 microcoulombs. And C was positive 4 microcoulombs. Okay, so the charge that B is putting on A, one, it's negative, A is positive, it's going to attract it, so it would be pulling it down. So this would be FQAB. C is positive, and A is positive, so it's going to be repelling, so it would be pushing up this way. So this would be FQAC. And now you need to add those together. Well, to add those together, you're going to have to break AC down into components. So do FQACY and FQACX. The angle here, which you can find because you have a 4 and a 5, will be the angle here. Once you have your components, then you would add up the, find the total force in the y, find the total force in the x, and then redraw your new triangle and draw uh, find your resultant. Okay? So for number 7, it wants you to do it for every one of those. It wants you to find the net force on A, the net force on B, the net force on C. Okay? So I want you to try these. We're getting way too close to the end of the year for you to not try these because the test on this will be in about a week's time. Um, so you have a three-day long weekend. So give these a try. You can at least find all the forces. You can draw the diagrams. You can ask questions in the group. Um, I'm not going to do any more because that would be about all we would get through in class tomorrow. So give it a try. See how you'll do. And on Tuesday we can go over them. Okay? Try not to miss me too much tomorrow.